What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be going over the easiest heroes to play as a beginner. So coming off at number one spot is going to be D.Va. So D.Va has a few pretty easy to learn abilities. She shoots her cannons with her R2 or, you know, depending on what console you're playing on. They do a whole lot more damage up close than they do far away. And then she also has her rockets, which do a decent amount of damage as well. And then she could also fly around using the L1 and you can cancel the flight ability to either engage with enemies or run away from enemies or really do whatever you want with that. So these abilities of D.Va are pretty important and in my opinion she has a pretty good alt too actually because it basically just allows her to get out of her mech and just blow up anything around it. So it's basically a nuke and then you can get back in the mech and it's also important to note with D.Va as well if you do end up losing all of your health you jump out of the mech as the you know person actually in there and you get a little gun that you can run around and shoot with. After that, another easy tank to use is going to be Orisa, or Orisa, however you want to say that. So she actually does a pretty good amount of damage. She is a range hero, so she can shoot pretty far. Her L2 ability, what I'm showing right now, is simply shoots out a little orb that attracts people to it. Her main and best ability is her shield because she can protect herself and others behind it. And she really is more of a supportive tank. And uh, she, you know, she really isn't necessarily meant to do a whole lot of damage or necessarily take out um, DPS or support or anything like that. But she is meant to give a good shield and she's sort of the definition of a support tank because she's meant to sit on the back line, kind of stay back there, do some damage. Her alt involves her putting down this little totem that you can see right there, and it basically just gives everyone within a range of the totem that's friendly a significant damage boost. So as you can see, she's just clearly shooting people pretty quickly and getting some pretty easy kills there. And also another important thing to note with her orb is that her L2 ability basically allows her to drag people off of the map if they're close to the edge, which I didn't quite get that tracer off. Coming up next in the tank category is going to be Roadhog. So Roadhog, in my opinion, is a pretty easy tank. He's not the best by any means, but uh, he can be pretty decent. So his L1 ability is a hook, as you can see right there. His R2 shoots a shotgun that is close range, and then his L2 shoots a long range weapon that is basically the same weapon he only has six bullets but they do a significant amount of damage so roadhog would be considered more of an off tank so he does a lot of offensive damage and then his r1 ability does heal himself and like i said roadhog you know isn't the best but he can be good and similar to Arisa, he can drag people off the map like that and then roadhog's alt whole hog is a pretty good alt in my opinion it does a good amount of damage it can basically just send people flying back you know it doesn't last very long but it, it's just a decent alt that's very easy to learn and overall roadhog mechanics are probably best for more of a flank play style so that is really it for tanks in my opinion so moving on to dps the easiest dps coming in at number one is ash i think she's easy because she has a rifle she can aim down to do more damage so if you aim down the sights you do more damage she has a dynamite which does burn damage which you can also shoot out of the air but it does explode on itself and then finally she just simply has a shotgun so i'll show you an example here if i zoom in and do a headshot it takes two headshots to kill as you can see right there but then if i just simply hip fire my weapon it takes three shots to the head to kill one of these training bots so uh, in terms of dps i believe that ash is probably the best and the easiest dps to learn and another important thing to note about her shotgun is that it actually does send her back as well. So her ultimate is just simply Bob, and Bob's a very easy alt. Uh, one thing to note with Bob is when you call him in, you actually can aim where he runs into, and he'll just simply run until he runs into a wall. Then when Bob is available, he just shoots everything around him. So just make sure you do blow up those dynamites when you want to, and use the shotgun how you want to as well. Up next is going to be Bastion. So Bastion uh, is a really annoying DPS to go against if he's going against tanks. He just simply fires his machine gun and then his L1 ability allows him to plant himself in the ground so he cannot move but he does a significant amount of damage. And as you can see here, I'm going to switch it up to some tanks and just show you that he can pretty much shred tanks from a decent range. 
uh, very, very quickly with headshots and just honestly with body shots as well. So uh, Bastion does a ton of damage. If you are playing a, da playing a Bastion, you should definitely have gold damage. And Bastion's ult turns him into a movable tank that can one-shot DPS and support and three-shot tanks and pretty much take out anyone you would like. So Bastion's last ability is his healing ability, which is his L2. So he only really has three things he can do. Shoot his machine gun, go stationary, shoot his turret, or heal himself. But overall, pretty easy to play, pretty easy to learn. After that is going to be Junkrat. So Junkrat, in my opinion, is pretty easy because he's pretty spammy. He does a decent amount of damage, and he's relatively easy to learn. So Junkrat's gun, his R2 ability, only shoots out just little grenades, like it's a grenade launcher. His L1 ability throws a landmine type looking thing, and then his R1 throws a trap, which will trap any hero, and it will actually do a little bit of damage and trap them so that you would hopefully be able to do some damage while they're trapped. And one important thing to note about Junkrat is that he can't actually hurt himself with his mines. So when he do throw that mine or do throw that trap, it will send you and the opponent back if you're close enough then his ultimate is his rip tire which is just basically a giant tire so as you can see right there i do send that reinhardt off the map very easily with my l1 ability and another combo that's very easy to learn with junkrat is just simply hitting them one shot with a grenade and then the second shot with his landmine but landmines are probably best to use to move yourself around the map like i just did right there you can go very very high and in any direction you want with that Coming in next is going to be McCree. So with McCree, he shoots a revolver, he has six bullets, he has a stun grenade, which is his, uh, his R1 ability. His L1 is just simply a roll to get him out of situations or maybe behind enemy lines. And his gun is relatively easy to shoot and control. And then his L2 ability quickly fires the remaining bullets in his gun. So with McCree, I, I, he's again a sh pretty basic shooter. He doesn't have any crazy abilities, but can be very, very good. And McCree's ult basically puts him in a deadeye mode where he is a guaranteed headshot and a guaranteed insta-kill, but this does not shoot through shield. So McCree's ult can very easily team wipe a team if you're in the right position. After that it is going to be Soldier 76. So with Soldier, he is probably the easiest character to learn because you know you've likely played just basic shooters if you are playing Overwatch. He shoots his gun, it has 25 rounds, it's just a simple assault rifle. His L2 shoots a sort of three grenade burst shot that does a significant amount of damage. Then his R1 throws down a healing pad, which can heal himself and his teammates. And then his L1 just simply makes it so he can sprint. He's actually the only character in the game who has a sprint button. And then finally, his ultimate power makes it so he basically gets an aimbot. That's what a lot of people call it. What I call it, I call it this aimbot. And because it literally makes it so you cannot miss. But again, this does not shoot through shields. After that is going to be Torbjorn. So Torbjorn, in my opinion, is an easy hero because he has a lot of good abilities. And they are basically easy to learn. So his R... His uh, R2 is going to be a single fire shot, his L2 is going to be a shotgun, then his R1 ability makes him sort of charge up, it gives him boosted health, boosted uh, damage, and then also boosted speed. So his R1 ability can be very, very deadly, and then he also throws down a turret that can be killed, can be repaired by taking out his hammer, and his hammer can also be used as a weapon, but uh, honestly, Torbjorn, although he does have a lot of abilities to learn, he is relatively easy, and it is somewhat simple to put a turret in a good location to just simply take damage as well as you getting up on the front lines or staying behind that turret and repairing it. And going on with his ultimate, it basically shoots out a bed of lava that shoots out of his left hand right there and when enemies go on it they take damage and they also take burning damage so as you can see here the robots or the you know training bots keep spawning and keep taking damage and then last but not least in the dps category in my opinion of easy heroes is tracer so tracer shoots two guns like this she does a pretty significant amount of damage from them definitely more of a close range hero than a farer and then her l1 ability basically makes it so she can blink or teleport a very short range and her r1 ability makes it so she can recall her last teleports and also regain health 
And one really nice thing about Tracer, especially for beginners, is that she gets her ult much, much faster. And I believe she is still actually the fastest in the game in terms of how much damage she actually has to do to get that ult. So Tracer has the ability to move around quick, does a lot of damage, gets her ult quick, that in my opinion is good, which is just throwing a bomb on top or next to people, and she actually can heal herself as well. So that makes her uh, a category or a person to put in this list. Now moving on to support, coming off the first one is Mercy. So Mercy does not really do damage. She has a gun that she brings out, but she really isn't meant to do damage. Her uh, R1, L1 abilities, so she basically is allowed to heal, like her healing is her main attack. She doesn't actually have a main attack. She can heal with her uh, R2, she can damage boost with her R1, and then she can also fly to different people around the map if they are in range using L1. That is one of her abilities that are pretty good. And then her L2 is her revive, but you only can revive every 30 seconds. And this can be a very, very big deal if you were in the middle of a fight, one of your teammates go down and you are able to revive them. So Mercy's abilities are purely support. I would not recommend pretty much ever taking out your little pistol here unless you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation, no one is there to help you. But if that is not the case, should pretty much always be damage boosting people as they are going to do a lot more damage being damage boosted if they are hitting their shots versus you shooting your pistol because as you can see although it does shoot relatively quick it does not do a whole lot of damage then mercy's alt again is purely supportive it makes it so she regains health quicker she can fly around in the air and you can actually control her flying and then she also has the abilities like before to fly and flutter down so as you can see i'm up in the hair here and her l2 ability is actually actually makes it so she falls much slower which can be very very helpful if you're flying up to characters up in the air and don't want to fall down to the ground. And last but not least on the list, uh, the, when it, another easy hero who's on the support side is going to be Moira. So Moira's R2 ability is her heal which just shoots out a healing uh, stream. Her R1 is a little bit difficult to remember but her R1 basically makes it so you can throw a healing orb and you can also throw a damage orb. So as you can see, when I throw the orb right here, the healing one, it heals her and it also heals allies around her. And the nice thing about this is that you can heal multiple allies as well as yourself at once. And then the damage orb can actually damage multiple allies at once. And then lastly, her L2 ability makes it so that she can also do a damage stream. And this one has a larger range than her healing stream, but it doesn't do a significant amount of damage, but you definitely can still go 1v1 versus certain DPS characters. And lastly, her L1 ability is her fade, which makes it so she's almost invisible, but she can very easily get herself in and out of situations but be careful this fade does have a reload time and finally her ultimate is coalescence which allows her to shoot a healing and damage stream as you can see that i'm doing right here so if there was an ally in front of me when i was shooting that i would be able to heal them as well but other than that guys is really it for this video so these are the easiest uh, characters in my opinion but I definitely recommend you trying out every single character just to learn about their alt and to learn about what they do and things like that because there are a ton of characters in overwatch and even if you are just beginning and you're not that great a very very important thing to do is just simply learn the other characters powers and the easiest way to do that is by just simply playing as them because you're it's somewhat difficult to actually like when you're first starting off figure out what other heroes do just by simply going against them or having them on your team so definitely check out all the characters if not very many of them in the uh, just overall categories and another thing to note it is much diff more difficult and takes a lot longer to actually get to dps queues so you know feel free to play tank and support more in the beginning but other than that guys i hope you enjoyed the video